Let's learn to set up fishing pole trap for white. So if white starts the game with e4, then you should play e5, taking fair share of the center. If white attacks your undefended e5 pawn, then you can defend this pawn with knight c6. And here, white might play bishop b5, entering the Roy Lopez opening and threatening to capture your knight over here so that he can get a free pawn on e5. Well, let's say if you do not protect this pawn and play a move like a6, then white can easily capture this knight over here. You will capture back the bishop and now white will get a free pawn on e5. Hence, black must do something to protect this pawn over here. But instead of playing a defensive move like d6 or queen e7, black decides to counterattack white by playing knight to f6. Now, black is also threatening to capture the undefended e4 pawn. And here, white castles. Now, you must be wondering why is white castling over here? Because in that case, he is just giving a free pawn to black. But actually, black isn't getting a free pawn here because if black captures this pawn over here, then white can play rook e1, attacking this knight over here. Knight has to go back. And now as you see, white's two pieces are attacking this e5 pawn over here. So white can easily capture this pawn with his knight while double attacking this knight over here along with this bishop. Hence, what looked like a free pawn isn't a free pawn in reality. Hence, black did not capture over here. So what should black do over here? So if you want to set up a fishing pole trap for white, then you can try to play a very interesting move over here and that is knight g4. While knight g4 move does provide an extra protection to this pawn, this move is also putting pressure on these two weak pawns on the king side. And white has just castled right now and seeing this knight entering his territory, that too on the king side, is quite an uncomfortable situation for white. So. Here in most cases, what white will try to do is get rid of this knight by playing h3. So by playing h3, your opponent would ask you to retreat this knight to its original place. But here, you will shock your opponent by playing the move h5. And with this move, you have laid the fishing pole trap. And here, if you are playing this trap against beginner players, then they will surely get confused as to why you are offering this knight for free. And the way that they'll analyze the situation is that, you know, all of other black pieces are sitting in black's territory and they can't see any attack coming here on the white side. So most of them will think that, you know, it is very harmless to capture this free knight over here. So let me just capture this free knight and get a material advantage in the game. So most beginners over here will play h into g4. They will capture the free knight. But this move immediately gives black a tremendous winning advantage because black can now capture this pawn back with a tempo because now this pawn is attacking this knight over here. So the knight has only two safe options. One is this square and the other one is this square because all of these other squares are not safe for the knight. So let's see both the variation what happens when knight comes on the e1 square as well as when knight comes on the h2 square. Let's first look at the e1 variation. So if knight comes on the e1 square, then black can immediately give a heart attack to white by playing queen h4. Basically, black is just threatening checkmate on either h2 or h1 square. Notice what a beautiful battery this rook and queen has formed on this open h file. Now, white's king doesn't have any safe squares to go. So he will try to create a safe square by playing f3. So if the queen comes on either of these squares, the white king can escape to this square. But black will take away even that square from the king by playing g3. And now white doesn't have any good moves in the game that can save his game. It doesn't matter what he plays in the game. In the very next move, he's gonna get checkmated. So let's say white plays bishop into c6 and now queen h1 is a checkmate. Let's go back a few moves and look at the second variation. Now let's see what happens when the knight goes to the h2 square. So if white plays knight h2, then you will continue with your plan by playing queen h4, once again threatening checkmate on h2 square. White definitely cannot save this knight and he needs to protect his king. So that is why once again he will play f3 and now black will again play g3, attacking this knight one more time as well as taking control of this f2 square. And now white will try to make room for his king by playing rook to e1. And now black takes this knight with a check. King moves to f1. 
and now if you play here queen h1 check then the king will be able to escape on this square with a discovered attack on your queen so before giving check to the king black should take away this escape square for the king therefore black should play knight to d4 taking control of this escape square for the king and now white has completely lost the game because it doesn't matter what he plays in the game he cannot escape from the checkmate so white will play bishop into d7 check you capture his bishop back and now he'll try to play c3 attacking this knight but it's too late because queen h1 is a checkmate and now before i show you the third variation in this trap i earnestly request you to like this video and subscribe to my channel it really motivates me to bring such amazing content for you and now let me show you the third variation in this trap so as you have already seen that both of these moves knight to e1 and knight to h2 is completely losing for white so what should you play if the white player is smart enough and doesn't take his knight on either of these two squares since we have already seen in the second variation that how black knight jumps on this square and takes control of this square in creating checkmate for white so what if white decides to let go of this knight and rather captures on c6 first so what should you play well here you have two options now either you can capture this or this but which one is the best move well since you have already launched an attack on white's king so here you should play aggressively so capturing on c6 would not benefit you a lot you should choose to play aggressively over here so that is why you should capture on f3 first because now you are threatening to capture this pawn and then bring your rook over here and maybe the queen here to launch a devastating attack on the king so white will be now forced to capture this pawn with his queen and now you can play queen h4 threatening to mate on these squares one more time white is forced to defend with queen h3 you will now capture the queen he will capture back and now you can take this bishop with your d pawn which will open up the line for your light square bishop and notice how your bishop and your rook are together targeting this weak h3 pawn which cannot be defended by this white king alone so this pawn is sure to go off the board in the next turn and here in this scenario look at the position also black has a completely dominating winning position because all of his pieces are very active look at this light squared bishop look at this rook they are all very active this dark squared bishop is ready to jump into action and look at white's pieces all of these pieces are dead inside their home they're just lying there passively so your pieces are more active as compared to white's plus white is going to lose this pawn anyhow so he's going to go down in material as well as white's king side is completely shattered and broken and it won't take long enough for black to launch a devastating attack on this wide open king and finish off white's game quickly do check out the channel's membership program if you want to really improve in chess and now i would like to sign off with the question of the day so today's question is it's white's turn in the game and should white capture this knight over here do let me know your answers in the comments box and i'll see you in the next video until then keep learning keep practicing